second corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18 it says be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion has light with darkness uh-huh we're reading to 18 and what concord has christ with belial and what part has he that believeth with an infidel 16 and what agreement had the temple of god with idols for ye are the temple of the living god and as god had said i will dwell in them and walk in them and i will be their god and they shall be my people 17. wherefore he says come out from among them this is the definition of consecration come out from among them and be ye separate not be ye critical not be ye sarcastic come out from among them and be ye separate said the lord and touch not the unclean thing and i will receive you verse 18. it says and i will be a father unto you and you shall be my sons and my daughters saith the lord god almighty please look up for many believers the idea of consecration is only to come out of a life of sin and that is very important but I have taught you that consecration is beyond the issue of sin. There are many good things. Look up, please. If you walk with God, there are many things that are not sinful and evil that you will still need to come out of. In, 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 are we together now? Consecration is not just a matter of what is bad or sinful. No. There are many things. It is, it is the constraining power. To be able to honor and keep your call, your mantle, your mandate. So there are many people who are not sinful, but they are not consecrated. Let me tell you the truth. One of the characteristic features of consecration is that you cannot say yes to everything. And including good things. This is what many people don't like. Evil things, fine. That's, that's fine. But there are many things. It says all things are lawful. But not all things are expedient. I hope you like what I'm teaching. Let me show you two more scriptures. Who is on the Lord's side? Consecration. First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Apostle John now. Love not the world. I've taught it here. Is the Greek word eros. An ungodly affinity. He's not saying don't have money or don't have material possession. People have erroneously thought that, that was, that's what he was saying. No, no, not at all. Neither the things that are in the world. Look up, please. If any man love the world, he says the love of the Father is not in him. What are the things? He categorizes everything in the world into three. One, the lust of the flesh. Two, the lust of the eyes. Three, the pride of life. He says it's not of the Father bodies of the world 17 it says give us 17 please and the world passed away and the lost thereof it says but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever please look up how do I know that I am on the Lord's side if it is the God of the Bible you are walking with as you begin to walk with God and the more you rise there are certain constraints that God will start putting in your life. Some of them may not be general constraints. I'm explaining to you the full extent of what it means to be consecrated. Can I tell you, especially if you're in ministry, I want you to listen here. Every call and every anointing has a consecration that protects it. If you are Samson, beware of your hair. If you are Elijah, beware of your prayer life. Are we together now? It's not just enough to say, I want a double portion. I want, if you receive a man's anointing and do not study the consecration to keep it, you will lose it. You will lose it for sure. God can become so meticulous about your life that he will even put certain constraints in your life. It may not be a general rule for everybody. For instance, do you know because of the nature of your work, the nature of your call, and the dealings of God with you, God can give you an instruction and say for you and your wife, you shouldn't have more than two children. Now, it was the same God who said be fruitful, but he has weighed you from the lens of destiny, and he has seen that your best position for efficiency is with two children. You can choose to disobey him and have, you know, whatever number. 
and then you will find out that that act of disobedience will become a weight so the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside two things number one every weight then number two the sin number one every weight number two the sin most believers focus on the sin part and they don't focus on the weight part that's why you see if if you are really walking with god please let me have your attention do you know why god will often ask you to make ridiculous sacrifices as you walk with him it's not that god wants the money or the car why would god sit down and say empty your bank account what does he want to do with the money there is something he's doing to you he's breaking that hold he can bring back the money why will he call abraham and say sacrifice isaac why didn't he just say look abraham i want you to be serious with me no i do not know one man who is mightily used by god who did not go through the school of consecration and sacrifice i cannot begin to tell you the things i have laid down for this god there are some of you if it's the issue of sin with speed oh i love you lord jesus but the moment he begins to make a demand that salary as it just entered give it to me i rebuke that wicked spirit that wants me to suffer in this month of may and god says you see huh. sacrifice a time will come in the realm of the spirit where the only access code to a new dimension is sacrifice blood dripping on your altar I know you may not like what you are hearing but i love you too much to not tell you the truth sincerely people admire power people admire all kind when they see god walking with people at certain dimensions no you want a life of miracles signs and wonders it's not just about reading scripture and say i believe no try it it won't work there is a sacrifice Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. Let the fire from your altar touch my heart. That's what it takes to be on the Lord's side. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth. Oh, speak from the heavens, and I'll hear from the earth. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. My sacrifice is calling you, oh God. Can I tell you what it means to be consecrated? To get to a point where there is nothing in your life you cannot give up for God and until you get to that realm I submit to you there are certain levels of business you cannot do with God <clears throat> this is not about impartation or just I believe no you've heard me the price for all of God is all of you Apostle, I'm a man of God. I want the Lord to give me the keys of nations. <laughs> when Peter and, and James met, you know, their mother met Jesus and said, Grant that when you have restored all things, my sons will sit down at your left and right. He said, the space is available, but can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? Who is on the Lord's side? The person who makes up his mind that whatever it will take, if I will lose myself and my ego and my honor for him, so be it. If I will lose my reputation for his majesty, so be it. If all my crowns and my achievements fall like Dagon before the ark for his sake, so be it. I'm teaching you authentic Bible consecration. Now, let me tell you one truth. 
God is not interested in anything you own. He's interested in his space and his position in your life. So when he touches those things, it's because he has found out that those things, you have allowed those things to grow. The relationship, the money, you started becoming a celebrity and celebrity mindset exalted you. You pushed God and sat on the throne. So when he begins, when God says, sold your finances, or what does it do? What, what, what will he do with the money? He said, if, if I need something, is it you? I'll come and ask to give me. Please hear me. I'm saying this because some of you are in a season of pruning and dealing. It looked like it, everything god is stripping you naked and you are saying god is it that you want to disgrace me i'm explaining to you what he's doing he's bringing you to the lord's side who is on the lord's side one who has died truly to himself that you can hold a billion naira and god says give it for me and you say your majesty if it is for you i lay it down you get to a point where absolutely nothing can take his place. That is the realm you will see wealth that you have never seen. You will see levels of the anointing that you cannot be able to explain. Let me tell you, for as long as you are still using God to build an empire, for as long as you are still using God to build church, as long as you are still using the name of Jesus like a bribe to build a reputation for yourself, I submit to you and trust me I know what I'm saying you see what the Lord did across in Manchester I know that people will see these things and say wow it's just the grace of God I agree but from a standpoint of consecration don't downplay what consecration can do you would you will use formulas and it will not work but when you die he comes to resurrect you by himself so that anything he gives you is his own You've heard me teach you that the reason why you put your money in the bank is not because you know the bank manager. In fact, it's not even because you like the bank. You put your money in the bank because the day you need it, they can give you. Am I right on that? The day you go to the bank and say, give me my one million and they tell you stories. You will report them. This is what causes banks to go down. That there are so many customers who want to withdraw their monies and it looks like for whatever reason they cannot give them. If you, if you place one billion in the bank, you are happy. If somebody transfers money, he did not put it in your pocket, but he sent it to an account that the bank gave you, and you are happy. You start rejoicing. I've gotten money. Was, is, is the bank your own? But it's because you know the ease of withdrawal was where your confidence came from. That's the same thing with God. The moment everything he has that he gives you remains his own in experience ladies and gentlemen you will lay up gold as dust trust me there are many of you who have tried this prosperity thing and it's not working sometimes you need to just close those books and lie down on the ground it's not just by no wealth in this kingdom is a trust it's not an achievement other people can say, I achieved this. But there are people, he, he gave on to some five. He gave on to some two. Is somebody listening to me? Yes. Consecration. Who is on the Lord's side? The one who can say, my life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself. I give myself to you and mean what you are saying my life is not my own that means your ministry too that means the children too that means the house and cars when you say my life you can't say my my spirit is not my own but my bank account is my own my life means everything in my life This language of my thing, my business, my money. If you mean that in terms of administration and all of that, I understand. But in terms of ownership is the mistake of the rich fool. Get my teaching the rich young ruler. A clarion call for this generation.
who is on the Lord's side, one who has decided that everything I have belongs to him. That what he wants is what I do. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Don't sing it if you don't believe it. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Oh, Lord. The people you admire today that we call fathers that are being used, these were the songs that they sang when they had nothing. They rolled on the floor shouting that song and they meant it. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Kumbaya, my Lord. Kumbaya. Oh, Lord. What is the meaning of this point? That for every time you walk with God, you have an assignment to search whether there is an idol growing in your heart. You don't have to be evil. You can give birth to children and all of a sudden that child can become an idol. You can get married and that marriage becomes an idol. You can win some kind of contract. Five billion, ten billion. And that's the end of it. You and God... God, I will come back to your side when I finish the contract. And for us men of God, by the time God begins to lift you, listen to my message at the conference. I thought that there's something called the human cycle. Every time there is abundance and increase and rest, men usually become careless and complacent. Then they go down to a state of slumber and decadence as a natural result of comfort. And then in that point, they forget God. And usually they are consequently given to the hands of their enemies. And then in the midst of their pain, their languishing, they now begin to call upon the God of heaven. He will usually send a prophet to warn them and say, you have left your your way with me and they will repent with brokenness and genuine repentance and then you will bring them redemption then they get back to abundance then the cycle continues every time God is lifting you be careful because you are already at the corridors of falling the higher you rise the easier it is to fall because at that point what is there now I'm a big man, I'm a big woman. I have my estates, millionaire. My name is known all over. I hope God is speaking to us.